Hey love bugs, it's Riles. I'm back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed. I'm doing blessed and highly favorite and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome. And to my returning subs, my grown extended beautiful family. As always, thank you so much for the love and support. It is truly, truly appreciated. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste, love and blessings, love and light. And many blessings are definitely coming your way. And if you have uh, been watching my videos for a while, I have not already please drop a line i would love the chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me and if you feel like the videos get just give you a good vibe and you're just really you know you appreciate the information that um i dropped to you please go ahead and share you never know how that can really help somebody out and lift them up as well so i hope you're able to resonate with the content of my video and the uh content title of this one is called twin flame 101 hey okas uh, the cliffhanger moment. I was watching a video with my girl. Um, she's an actress, Megan Good. And she just went through um, a divorce with her husband. I think his name is like Andre or Antoine or whatever. I, I apologize. I can't remember what his name was. And she was like, she just went through a divorce. And it's just a good thing where you, when you can just see that... Um, even when it goes through divorce, it doesn't have to be negative. It doesn't have to be messy. It doesn't have to have drama. It can just say, you know what, our spark is gone. You know, um, we can still end this on a uh, very civil note. And, you know, I want you to be happy. You know, even if that happiness wasn't going to occur with being in that union with me. And that was a beautiful thing to be able to have uh, that. And, you know, and she's just living a good life, you know. Um, and she seems like she's really happy and stuff like that. And they're both doing the same thing. You know, I've seen different pictures of her husband, too. And he just feels like, I mean, not he feels like, but he looks like he's, you know, living his best life, too. And that's really good when you can part ways on a, a beautiful note like that. And she was, I don't know if she was on a podcast or she was a, 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 a one of the guest hosts on, you know, what, you know, on a show or something like that. But she said, I was going through a cliffhanger moment. You know, I was standing at the cliff, you know, and I was doing a lot of things. And, you know, with her being in the public eye, you know, there's always somebody's opinion about your life. Like, people know so much about what's going on in your life except you, you know. But it was at that point where she was just like, I was at that cliffhanger moment where, I, I mean, I could go in so many different ways. And I just went to the edge. And, you know, it was at that jump. And then just for me doing what I needed to do, it showed me I knew how to fly. And when I tell you, I was like, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. You're at that cliffhanger moment where you're not allowing yourself to fear what's the unknown. You know, at the edge of the cliff, you can pay me to be out there. I like, I, I don't, you know, literally, you know, I, I see how, I don't know if anybody else is like that. When you see these different videos on how people do it, they do these crazy things. Like they can, you know, go all the way to the top of a, 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 a antenna on top of these daggone 12 million story buildings. Like, especially like in Dubai, you know, you all the way up in space by the time you get up there and they be taking them pictures and like that. I'm like, oh God, I feel queasy. You know, my heart started, you know, I feel like I'm about to pass out. Even though I'm in my house, you know, I'm looking at something like that. I'm like, man, look, you know, I haven't been on a roller coaster since I, I think the last time I was on a roller coaster, I was like when I was with my ex and I was still in my 20s. And it was like me and my best friend, God rest her soul, and her husband. And uh, we all went on a couple's thing, uh, a couple's uh, date, to go to Six Flags. And my ex was just laughing at me, like, why every time I get you on this roller coaster, you always want to close your eyes? I said, like, look. You know, it's for a destination. Uh, Final Destination came out with all them daggone roller coasters. I said, see, when they make movies about this, you know it's bad when you can watch a movie and you walking out paranoid. Every time, it could be a bird just coming over. You almost about to have a heart attack thinking it's like, is it my time? Is it in my, you know how your grandparents, you know, you're living in your last day. Is this my last day? You know, but you're in that cliffhanger moment where you can see how maybe you stop uh, you stop uh, doing things in your life maybe because you didn't believe in yourself you didn't have faith in yourself you didn't have confidence you know people dimmed your dimmed your dreams shut down your dreams there was nobody there to support you there is nobody there to uplift you give that words of encouragement feeling like vibe, vibes of encouragement you you felt alone and that's where you're at that cliffhanger moment where you see there's so many creative opportunities that's coming to you and it's telling you you got you know Take that leap, you know, allow yourself to jump and just being able to see where it can go, you know, and it can be scary. 
You know, because you, you normalize. You've been in a frequency for so long. You know, especially if your life been disrupted for so long. And you know, like, look, I'm tired of, of seeing, you know, everybody pass me by. And so many doors of opportunity coming up. And I'm feeling like sourpuss. You know, like, uh, you ain't going to congratulate them for what? You know, look at my life, you know. But it's just like that vibe. And you got to be able to digest that. You can't get mad at somebody else moving on with their life when you aren't willing to do the work yourself to be able to get where they're at. Because you don't know how many times they done had setbacks. You don't know how many times they don't put in work and really just didn't see the fruit of their labors for so long. They went towards different avenues. They don't heard spirit and God and all them tell them, you got this, you got this. And they really weren't believing in themselves. But they something just told them to keep on being consistent. They were at their, you know, their cliffhanger moment too. You know, because you, you may see the different posts and y'all hear all the time when I start speaking on, on different things, the spirit done guided me towards, you know, it'll tell you God is going to put you on that cliff and you're going to get that push. Either he's going to catch you or he's going to teach you how to fly. But you have to be able to trust that process and have faith. Take that leap of faith. It's scary. It is real, really, really, really scary. But at the same time, if you allowing yourself to know, you know, um, Sometimes things get really bad because universe wants to know you deserve so much more in your life. Everybody can be happy if you choose to be happy. You know, if you're doing things in good intent, good intent is going to come for you. You know, when you go through challenges, challenges is trying to challenge you to challenge yourself. You know, a lot of things, things is not going to make sense to you until it's that time for, it, for it, that clarity to come. Because a lot of times we just, we got comfortable in that, that comfort zone of cloudy confusion chaos until you like you know what enough is enough you know enough is enough i needed that within myself you'll start seeing that everything that you went through was preparing you to where you are at that now when you take that leap of faith you go harder than anything you're doing things when you don't feel like doing it you're allowing yourself to start you know holding that commitment to yourself when it was so easy for you to just back out and gave a a, a, a poor excuse on why it couldn't be done today you made room where you kept on using that statement, oh, it's too much on my plate, I can't do it today. You know, or there are certain things that is showing you, hey, I need you to do that. Oh, I, I mean, uh, I'm not ready. Okay, so when are you going to be ready? You know, you have to be able to make time for that. You know, when you know when there is something out there that you deserve, you know, and I, you know, I made a video out there the other day. And I think I'm uploading it. Y'all have been uploading and, 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 and downloading so many different damn things. I don't know <laughs> where I'm coming or going. But it's like a lot of times, universe and God will turn up that heat when they know that they got something out there really for you. They will make stuff come hit the fan. They will have people that are around you to treat you like crap. You know, and, and, and just really go through that because this is like that karma is telling you, let go. Except for what is, and it, you know, so you can open the door for what could be. You know, let go of what was. Appreciate where you're at now and being able to push through for tomorrow. And you know, there's so many different things that's coming out where that cliffhanger moment, you ain't going to worry about what other people define you as. Or there will be different people that still got that opinion of you of the person you used to be. They still got that, that vision board of who you used to be. It don't matter. You know, there are going to be people out there, you know, that didn't believe in you. And when you finally start believing in yourself and you actually, you know, you, you surpassed the where you thought you were. You're going to understand why challenges were hard. You're going to understand why enemies stayed on you like white on rice, flies on, you know, on why things were going. Because so many things are unfolding for you. You're discovering what, you know, the enemy didn't want you. They were scared that you would be able to know. You know, universe and God and, and your ancestors showing you the potential they always seen within yourself. You know, a lot of times you got to find that out through shortcomings. Through setbacks, through through chaos, through upset, through, you know, despair, you know, depression, sadness, you know, misfortune, some kind of struggle, you know, and you're finding those out and it's leading you towards that cliffhanger. This is that that this that that time where you gotta be a drilling junkie of everything else out in the world. I don't see too many hiccups. Of being a drilling junkie for that but for me going through my transference for my prosperity whatever I feel like I deserve I'm gonna be a drilling junkie for that I don't slept on myself way too long I allowed the enemy to sit up here and talk in my head about what I can't cannot do what I won't do and and what can be stopped and is at that point where you know what hey 
if it's going to be that way, at least I can sit up here and say if it stays that way, it's not going to be staying there that way because I sit on myself. It's not going to stay that way because I slept on myself. I got out there. I allowed myself to start doing different things. The things that I enjoyed, I start enjoying them again. You know, stop allowing myself to stay in that depression. Anything that was placed on me that made me want to discount myself, discredit myself, made me doubt myself, that was the exact thing I needed for me to be able to say, believe in yourself again. Look at how many things you have gone through and it has impacted you in the best way. It has impacted people that you never knew that you would connect with in the best way. It allowed you, you know, people gave you their encouragement to show you you had strength when you were always just fake focusing on the surroundings of your weaknesses. These are the things that are showing you you're heading towards that cliffhanger moment. Because you're no longer worried about what other people's opinions of you are. It's what you see in yourself. What you believe in yourself. If there's things that you're being pushed to do that is out the norm for you because it's showing you there's hidden talents that has not yet been discovered in you. This is going to find out where your determination can truly be. What can really mo motivate you. There's going to be certain things that you have entertained that you don't put all, your all in. And then come to find out when you finally got it, this is not what was for you. You know, or this wasn't, you know, this was something that was, it, it, it didn't give you, when you finally got it, it wasn't the joy you expected. Now it's just like when you put your all in certain things that was irrelevant, now this is that time for you to discover what's relevant. You know, this is now that time to find that new you that's always been there for you to discover that you. You're acknowledging all different sides of yourself right now. You're doing that. And that mess can be challenging as I don't know what. It can be frustrating. You're going through different challenges. But this is letting you know. They always tell you get, get comfortable being uncomfortable. There will be new there will be new opportunities that's open for you. You when you're allowing yourself to keep pushing, and you know, even if it's not really being acknowledged at that day or tomorrow or the next day or the next, don't give up on yourself. This is really showing you, you know, um how if you sit up here and say, you know, there's an opportunity or you see something that you really, truly, you know, you really, truly are passionate about. But um, you don't know if you have the actual funding to be able to do that. You know, it could be a financial. It could be the connections. You know, it, it could be as like who you know is not always what you have is who you know what you know. Or, you know, the, the connections you can get. You know, you don't know how God can give you, get, just use something so small impacted in a big way you know a lot of times you you don't realize how many people didn't even have you know empires ceos you know starting their own you know on on um mainstream and, and just blew the heck up you really don't know they could have been doing that out of a cardboard box and you just don't know you know god and universe can can take something of a mustard seed and blow that mess up and be able to own a whole company from that you know, the way it's passing on the five generations that ain't even been discovered yet. You know, you just don't know. But these are the things that's telling you, get woke. Pay attention. You deserve this. We can complain all day about what we don't like, what we're dealing with, what we're tired of dealing with. And it's just like, okay. You know, my mom used to tell me, when you know you're tired, you're going to start putting in that work so you can get untired of that. But then when you get to that point... Of why you had to go through that. You're going to have that understanding of why it had to be that way. You're at that cliffhanger moment where this is that time for you to take a leap of faith. You know, if you're clearing out so many things and you're seeing that this is not for me. This is not healthy for my soul. This is not, you know, gaining anything that is going to make me prosper. You know, um... There, you know, I, I'm tired of being by myself. There's so many people in my life that I've been there for that universe just don't snatch me out or I just had the courage to leave because they're opening you up to new things. If you've been by yourself for a long time and it don't matter, I'm not just talking about love, life, relationships. Everything is like everything that you're looking for is going to start with yourself. If you want a loving relationship, you have to start placing that love in yourself. Start feeling better. Start looking better. You know, caring about yourself. You know, your personal hygiene. How you kept up. Are, are you doing healthy uh, alternatives? You know, are you working out? Are you, you allowing yourself to look in the mirror? And no matter how, you know, whatever you faced. Whatever you went through is really probably put your, your body and your mind and your whole, you know, your, you don't change dramatically. And a lot of times it either, you know, you can gain weight, 
you know, where you can really have lost, a, uh, you know, there's some people that deal with stress differently. They can gain a lot of weight or they can deteriorate, they're emaciated, you know. And um, a lot of times it takes very dramatic and traumatic things, you know, and it can create something that either can make you, you know, believe in yourself and take you further or it can, you know, lead you down a path to self-destruction, you know, and it can sometimes eventually lead to death. You know, and these are the things that you're, you're when you are venturing in that cliffhanger moment, you're no longer going to care, you know, if you got support or not, you're going to start supporting yourself. You know, it doesn't matter who you encouraged, who you put a good vibration out. You were that blessing towards people. Even if it wasn't reciprocated, you have to understand when you can, when you pushing a blessing out to people, don't never look for something in return. That's where the, you'll start eliminating a lot of disappointments. Every time, you know, um, I put stuff out, you know, there's people that I still connect with. You know, I still connect with it and I still, you know, they, they text me, they email me, you know, like Roz, you know, you don't know what you helped me through. You don't know how much, you know, you helped me make sense to a whole lot of confusion I've gone through for years, months. You know, you can put one, I could be going through stuff for 10 years. You can drop a video, two, three, four, five, and it, it just uncleared out my whole, uh, you know, uh, foundation of what I see my life go through. And then it was just like, it let me know this is what my purpose is. I had to go through this, not just for myself. Self. You know, a lot of times we can take it personal what we're going through. And universe will tell you, even though this happened to you, this wasn't even about you. This is what about your purpose. This is about when you start healing, you start recognize what you had to go through, what you what your short perm, you know shortcoming was, what your high moments were, your low moments, your scraping the bottom of the barrel for you to succeed in your all, all, all past potential that you never knew you had. You know, and you're willing to allow yourself to tell that story of experience. You don't know how many people you're inspiring to inspire themselves. And then you'll understand why you had to go through things. You'll understand why things were so bad for you. You'll understand why there's days that you had to be alone. You had to understand why people treated you bad. You had to understand why you were laughed at, you were mocked at. You know, there's days that you didn't believe in yourself. There'll be days that you felt like you couldn't make it. You know, or you feared of who wouldn't get you. You would fear that you weren't understood. Or how many people would mock me. Or I was shamed for, I don't want people to know I was struggling. Or, you know, all those things. And that would be leading you to that cliffhanger moment. You know. And it's just like you watch a movie, you movie the cliffhanger. <laughs> you know, I remember, I think that's that movie with Salvation, uh, so what is that, Salvation Sloan? <laughs> Sylvester Sloan. He was in, I was like, man, the movie had, oh, no, oh, you know, just be doing all those different things. And I love cliffhanger movies, even though that must be making me feel like I have a heart attack, you know, and just be blowing my mind. You know, uh, especially like, it remind me of that movie called Vantage Point. When I say that movie with Dennis Quaid, it made me want to go watch it again. I might go watch that movie today. Because I was like, God, dog, that movie was good. I love I love horror movies and suspense and thrillers. But when it comes to movies like that, that really shows up and shows out, you know, that's kind of like life. Because you don't know, you know, a lot of times we, we sleep on ourselves because we lack that. We, we have that vibration that we don't have what it takes we feel fail, feel fair, you know, we feel fear, failure, you know, and it's, I may not have what it takes. What if I can't do this? What if I don't understand this? That's where a lot of times where we mess up at and then you end up going down a lifeline of regret. There's, you know, I used to work at a retirement home where, where I worked at, you know, I worked at them throughout my life. And the last one, when I moved down south, I worked well, you know, a lot, a lot of big wigs. You know that has retired. They were like, uh, they, there are people from the Holocaust, um, or they own big companies. Like if anybody's here from Georgia, you know, I, I work for the Callaways. You know, and all these different things. I got to meet, you know, um, so many different um, elders that you know um, has I learned so much from. You know, heard about different things that they went through through the Holocaust of their ways of living. Or, you know, people are like, oh, I don't like working with them, this and this and that. They're so itchy and they're so mean and they're, you know, they're stuck in their ways. And it would be people that they, I was already getting warnings about, even from my supervisors. And then the next thing you know, I can spend a whole week with them or even a day and they'll be requesting me. It's like, well, I was on work in a day. Well, no, okay, well, I don't need nobody to come by today. You know, and they were like, you know, I come into work, I'll be off coming. I'm like, girl, come here, we got to go to the office. I'm like, damn, but they 
hell did I do now? I just got in here. You know, they were like, um, such and such requested you. And you know, the boss be like, girl, what did you do? They complained about everybody else that done dropped by. You just started working here and they're already requesting you. What did you do? What do you mean what I did? You know, they're like, because they don't like nobody, but yet they liked you. I said, well, I had to understand, I, you know, I didn't have an opportunity of really having my grandparents in my life. You know, my adopted, uh, my adopted uh, father's mom, you know, um, I got to see her every once in a blue moon, but you know, that, that, that went off on the way. So I never really had to have grandparents. And I always put in this vibration about uh, what I would do if I had grandparents in my life and what, you know, I would love to do because it was just like so many people like, oh, you know, I was at my grandparents, you know, my papas and my memos and all this stuff and that. And I never really had that opportunity to do that. So when it would be, you know, especially, um, uh, what was my lady, uh, Miss Gerald, Miss Gerald and Mr. Gerald, and I love them, God rest her soul, you know, and she was so stuck in her way. And the, the, she was one of the ones that they complained about heavy. Like, she is mean. She is this. She is that. She is always complaining about something. Either you ain't doing enough of it. And when you do it, she still ain't satisfied. And I'm like, you know, and, and it's just like, that's just like with life. Somebody already putting a bad vibration about somebody. And you, you it makes you not want to deal with them. And it's just like, you know what, I've had so many bad things that was said about me. And then, you know, when somebody finally met me and they were like understanding why... You know, because there's times I ain't even gonna lie. Yeah, I'm gonna put a bad vibe out there to people that I really don't. They, they may not have anything good to say about me. Every, there's a lot of people that will have different versions of you. You know, and that may be true and it may not be true. But it was like, I let me not allow myself to come in their vibration and saying, just because that happened with them, that would happen with me. And then it was just like, you know, she was very stern. You know, she was very sorry. I mean, when you come up in somebody's house and they want this and this and that, you know, um, because I was in housekeeping and nursing, you know, a nursing assistant, you know, and all those things with, you know, uh, what what they call it, uh, God dog, uh, what was it? They had um, God dog. I forgot what they call it when they when they're um, on the live. God dog. Oh, I forgot the word for it, but they had it to where they if they had to be on a certain side where they only had their own room. You know, and they had to have AIDS and all this stuff and all this nurse AIDS. Now, I ain't talking about AIDS is immune, you know, that, that, that situation. But I'm talking about they had assisted living. That's what it was. And the other ones weren't assisted living. I was dealing with assisted living and there'll be different times that I didn't deal with them. And um, then it was just like me, you know, it, it's just like somebody new coming into your house. You don't, you don't know. You know, especially with my skin complexion being in the South, you know, we, you know, we, we were used to being maids and stuff like that in there. And there, you know, there would be a narrative paced up on us. So you never know. People could be open minded and then some people couldn't. You know, you just have to understand that these are people back in the day. You know, they were born in, in 1912, 1930, 30 something. So you never know what their upbringing is. You have to be able to have an open mind and not take it personal. And that's what it was with me. You know, I had some folks like, okay, <laughs> okay, don't do not do that. Don't do that. You know, I, I'm trying to be uh, like the movie to help, but don't do that. I, I'll make that miracle pie for you. Don't do that. And that's how the vibe I was at that time. But with her, it was a beautiful thing, and then it, it was like, you know, when she was first there, she kind of made me nervous, even though this little, little woman was like, you know, 75 pounds soaking wet, you know, and I was just nervous because it's just like, these are rich, 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 rich people, you know, you really just not trying to, you know, push the, you know, push that, ele you know, that em envelope on trying to get on their bad side, you know, some of them, you can just blink a different way, and it's already like that, you know, but when it with her, after... A while of me how I, I presented myself and stuff like that and she you know she's I sat with her and you know it, it came to that point where after I started working with her for a while you know people were always like looking at me like girl you know you a miracle worker because you know that woman don't like nobody you know her husband just easy to get along with with her that's a whole different story and they were like what did you do I said you have to understand if you, in those days, they did things different, you know, you have to understand that, you know, there was homemakers and, you know, and the way they did things is totally different on certain things, how they do today. So you have to understand they stuck in their way, 
you know and with her she was like that very assertive but with, with me she kind of let loosen up the reins a little bit because you have to understand you don't know who i am you don't know who i'm about you don't know if i'm bringing you trouble i'm uh, bringing you hope so when it was with her and she really went through that that amount where you can tell she was really deteriorating and it was just like with them i had multiple grandparents you know i dealt with all the time there'll be some i'm like they ain't no way in hell <laughs> they ain't no way in hell you know uh and uh, there'll be, you know, be different things. I'm like, uh-uh, you better take me off of that. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I had to have a bleach bath for like 45 minutes after I left there as soon as I got home. It was like the smell was still in my nose. And um, with her, it was just like, you know, she really sat there and, and, and just let it out. You know, and she was just like, Rosalind, you know, I'm getting up in age and I'm so used to, you know, doing things on my own. You know, I'm used to taking care of my husband, my kids, and this and this and that. You know, I was a school teacher. You know, her husband was a doctor. You know, her kids grew up to be doctors and lawyers and stuff like that. Very successful. Some of them still have, you know, where I'm staying at. They got their hospitals, their clinics and stuff like that. Lawyers, you know, um, and all those different things. And, you know, and she's just like, I can't move around like I want to. You know, I'm, I'm trying to take care of Gerald, you know, and it's hard to keep up with him as well. And, you know, you can really just see despair on her face. And, I mean, you know, me talking about it now because I miss her so much, you know. Um, and I told her, I said, look, I'm, I'm going to put it to you this way. Um, you only can be young forever, you know. You experienced life and you had a good life. You know, you don't took care of your kids. You know, I don't met your kids. You know, and they're very successful and stuff like that. And you can say, you can tell you are a very good mom. You're a very good teacher. You know, I've heard about you, you know, throughout, you know, the years when you were working and stuff like that. And you did a good job. And I said, and this is like, you, you are so used to doing stuff. And this is the way God is blessing you. And she just looked at me in a certain way, like the way I talked to her, it was it just blew her mind. And it was just like, you, you've done so much for other people, you know, and you're so independent and I get that. But now it's just like God is telling you, this is that time for you to kick back. This is that time for you to go on that, that, uh, that turning point of a vacation to let people do something for you. You've done so, so much for other people. This is like being, being paid back in kind. This is something that you needed, you know, and now it's at that time where, I mean, where you thought you were going to be go, go gadget mom, you know, and, and you're going to be the age of 220. You really going to do that. And if you are, you better, you better go ahead and patent that so you can make some more money on showing the fountain of youth at being that old. You know, you almost, you know, I said you almost connecting with the Methuselah. I said some folks out there, you know, y'all still trying to do that. And your dad on social number number, you know, social security number number three. But you know it. You know, and she started busting out laughing. And I said, just think about it. I said, let me go ahead and do what I'm going to do. You know, because she'll be like, Rosalind, you ain't got to do nothing. Sit down. You are not getting me fired. She's like, look, when you come in here, it, 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 it's like I instruct you on what I want have done in my house oh if it's something for you to just sit down with me and play uh rummy you gonna do that today all right yes ma'am <laughs> you know yes ma'am and be doing that and she was the most sweetest thing you know and, the, and it was just like you know i told her i said this this is your vacation i said I, I can't tell you about whoever else is being here or whatever but with me it's gonna be a vacation don't get in my way because you know this is what you're paying me for don't get in my way if you need something call me Ain't no problem. You know, I used to set up her medication and stuff like that. Get her meals prepped up for her. All those different things, you know. And um, and I told her, I said, we're going to put you on the beach. You know, you're going to get your little towel and, and your, you know, your little umbrella. Because she had her own little patio section where she was at. Where she was, you know, in her, uh, in, in the assisted living. Um, uh, what did it call it? Neighborhood or whatever you want to got it. Because it's, it's all the way on the upper north side and, and deep in the cut. But you can't find it. It has its own zip code. You can't even find it even on um, GPS. That's how good and discreet it is. So, you know, where she's at. And I said, we're going to do this. going to put you some music on. You want to listen to Chopin, Mozart. You know what I'm saying? But you know about that? I'm like, hey, what it is? You don't know what I know. You know, don't. I'm like, hey, I love that kind of music. You know, Mozart, you know, Beethoven, you know, Chopin, all those different things. And um, and I told her, I'm going to get you, you know, a, 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 a mimosa. She's like, baby, I don't drink what you're going to have one today. It's going to be one of those spiritual, spiritual visions. Then I just tell you, you're going to relax. And she started busting out laughing. You can tell it just really uplifted her heart because I know she was going through depression. I know she was, 
you know, she was going towards that stage of transition. And, you know, it was de depressing because I seen her, you know, my mom had already had passed. So it was like me clinging to her. It was like my mom and my grandmother all at the same time and my great-grandmother. She was just the most sweetest woman. And, you know, just being able to do that. And she, you know, she gave a laugh out, but I can tell, you know, it really touched her heart. And it was like right before she passed, I remember, you know, she was going through that. And um, she had touched me. And she's like, Rosalind, it's going to be one day that you're you're really going to impact the world in a, in a in, you know in a beautiful way. You have such a kind heart, and you have a way of breaking things down for you know people to feel better. You uplift people. Because every time you come, I already know I'm gonna get a good laugh. You know, I could be going through something, and you know how to change my vibration around every single time, and I love you for that. You know, she's like you a grandbaby I never had, and I love you for that. And it was just like. Um, I knew after that it, it was just like so many of my, my grandparents that I was dealing with assistant living inside it was passing away and I took it too personal even though I knew that was that transition um, that they go through but I know I had to find something else because it was just like she passed away you know it was hard for me to be in a room with her you know um, anybody ever dealt with you know people passing away and stuff like that that death rattle it, you, you know it brought up a lot of unhinged things that I was still dealing with you know on the grief of my mom on dealing with that and it was you know it was hard for me to be in a room with her and she would always it would get to the point where she can stare at me or she'll be staring and you can tell she's not even there you know, but I know she's in a better place now. And um, I didn't realize it was going to be in a story of time. But it is just like, I see how turn, turn of events, because there was a lot of people that passed away that, you know, I still have connection with. They always come and remind me, hey, I'm here. And I think just for me talking about that, that was her stopping by too as well. But they always told me, you know, you're going to impact the world in, in a crazy way. And you're just not even going to realize it. And it was like, you don't realize throughout your moments, you don't know how things are being set into play for you. And it really may not make sense. It's like, shoot, I don't got what it takes to be doing this and this and that. And, you know, at that point, I didn't really believe in myself. You know, I, you know, even though I've had people in my life that really encouraged me, you know, going through that. But it was like when trauma hit me, I, I just didn't know where I ended or I began it. You know, I said begin it. Yes, I did. I did say that. But, you know, being in that cliffhanger moment, you're going to get there. You know, allow yourself to surprise yourself. You keep earning it. You keep working hard for it. People don't believe you. You believe in yourself and you make them believe. It. This is what this is what a lost hope can really turn into. This is what something that you told me I'll never amount to nothing can turn into. You know, and that. And it's just like I've even had that, you know, I've heard that a lot in my life. You, you, just the way you do things, you'll never turn out to do anything good. You see how all these people doing that? Why, you could have been just like them. And I appreciate the fact is I, I didn't follow behind the crowd I would have got lost up you know and I'm glad I followed the beat of my own drum and when you're getting towards that you know you're going towards that cliff moment it's very scary it's gonna be you know have your heart you know it make you feel like your heart your butt don't you know your, your heart don't went to your butt you know and your heart don't you know and there'll be times it feel like about to jump out of your chest but this is that time take that chance off for yourself take it you know, universe is really probably probably having you going all different directions right now where it can be very overwhelming. But they know what they're doing. You know, and they always, you know, and I always hear that, you know, when they, when they talk to me, we're already where we're at. We're trying to get you there. We want you to see something in yourself that you weren't, we were able to see. Your ancestors were able to see. The tribes was. You know, when you look up what a Hayoka is, that's, that's an honor within itself. On just the character you're keeping, and right now, you know they don't did a flip flop on that. They don't, you know, flip script and turn the turn tables and flip that clean over, because there's a lot of us hidden in plain sight. You are not being characterized, and normalized. What an actual, you know, original Hayoka is. It's just they're, you know, they don't did a turn of events because everything's so sacred. You know, they don't flip to where it's not natural. And those are the things that because we're about to do some stuff that's not. They're not, they haven't been accustomed to it. It was always talked about in the books. You know, way back in the day. It's like there's going to be a time where, you know, the ones that has been here for a long time is going to be showing the ropes to the ones that are going to be coming out that we prepared from a long time ago. And what we're doing, the old, you know, the old ones has been up there for a long time. Our elders are, you know, learning the ropes on different things where they have learned the ropes. Let me, let me allow myself to retort. 
they have learned the ropes on different things and they're coming towards us towards different things the thunder beings you know your your your, your totems in every way the different makeup that you war path you know stuff that's coming up where you're dreaming about it different fire rituals of graduation on that new vibration is coming to you you know you're speaking to you know eagles and stuff like that or different times you're going through challenges and you'll see them swoop in to let you know hey you're not going through this alone you know all of us are watching just because you don't you may be alone but it's different between being alone and lonely so I hope you were able to resonate with the content of that video, y'all. Please drop a line. I will let, I, it would be a joy to be able to under, you know, being able to say, you know, Rosalind, I totally get it. I understand what you're talking about, and I appreciate that, you know. Or I, you know, I might have been going through stuff, and you made t total sense about that, you know. And I appreciate that. Or just, just like, oh, I needed this today, you know. Even that. So I hope you were able to resonate with that. You know, much love to you as well. Um. I leave my all my contact information in the description box below um, as well as uh, just being able to you know go through spiritual networking you know there's so many different things that we go through in our life that people don't understand we are so misunderstood you know and it takes a lot of courage for us to reach out to people that we don't know we're spiritually connected we've been knowing each other for millions and millions of years we're just playing different parts in our lives in different lifespans so you know just be able to be spiritually reacquainted acquainted again it's beautiful to be able to connect with each other and just being able to help each other along the way to let you know hey i can totally get it hey i went through that too you ain't know the problem you know you ain't the only one who went through that and i'm not crazy you know and neither are you you know so let you know that door is always open so you can you know you can connect with me and you know being able to talk to you just give you a deeper understanding if it's not from the experience that i have it's just the insight the universe has given me to share with you as well um and whatever we speak on is confidential and i about the best way I can you know just be able to broaden that perspective we're all students and teachers here we're all learning off of each other and we're passing that knowledge down you know that knowledge tree is truly you know rocking the boat and you know just really popping roots out that we really need to come accustomed to to acknowledge so hopefully you'll be able to connect with that as well and um if you feel generous you know please drop a line you know drop drop some you know drop a line of donation you know I said drop a line Drop a donation if you feel generous enough to. That's what I meant to do. You know, y'all, like I said, I've been doing a whole lot of videos or whatever. But you know what? Much love to you. Peace. <laughs>